I'm Yuri. I'm Jacob. And we are... Arr. Going for a drive. Volkswagen Golf R Manual. 2018 Volkswagen Golf R Auto. DSG, actually. So manual is in orange and DSG is in green. Yes, so remember that for the whole review. It's easy to reference. And thank you very much, Volkswagen, for getting awesome colors for press cars. So these are actually $3,000 optional paints, so thank you. This orange one is called TNT Orange. And I've got Viper Green Metallic. And the reason we've got two of them is because you guys asked in the comment to have a manual Volkswagen Golf R. Yeah, so we made it happen. So now that I'm finally in the top Golf. Yes, the most expensive Golf. And I've got a stick shift, I fully get it. You get Volkswagen Golfs. I get Volkswagen Golfs and Volkswagens. And you know how many complaints I have? Uh, Zero major complaints. I love this car. So basically what I'm hearing is this kills the GTI for you. Oh yeah, there's no point of getting a GTI. Why, why would you if you can get this? To save some money. Now the good stuff, horsepower and torque. 292 horsepower and 280 torques for both of them. All right, Jacob, and which wheels spin in the Golf R? All of them, because this has four motion. I tested the four wheel drive system in winter on both of these, and it is fantastic. I fully know what it's gonna do all the time. It's very controllable. I love it. I think the best part of both of these cars, obviously because they're very similar, is how predictable they are. Like very predictable, very precise. You know exactly what they're gonna do at all times. So this is not a rear wheel biased all wheel drive system, is it? No, it's definitely front biased. So for the most part, it's sending power to the front wheels, but when it sends a slip, it sends them to the back. And our Volkswagen rep, when I asked, he said that it can send up to 100% of the power to the back if it needs to, if the conditions allow. From my experiences with this car, I would not doubt that statement. Yuri, how do you like that manual transmission? I love it. It's not my favorite manual transmission, but I don't fully know where all the gears are on my shifter. Like, it doesn't feel as comfortable as other cars have felt. I think that transmission's pretty damn good, but I think the better transmission is this DSG. It's so fast. Yeah, it is faster, but why would you not get a manual besides, I don't know, your wife needs to drive it? Well, this is probably the only car in its class that you can actually get an automatic transmission in. So your wife, if she can't drive manual, can drive a Golf R. And that's why I think the Golf R is perfect because if you want a Focus RS, an STI, a Type R, a Veloster N, but you can't drive stick shift, you get the Golf R. Yeah, you don't have a choice, this is it. And it's, it's not a bad choice either, like. I don't think this is the best in its class, but if you need an automatic transmission, this is really good. I think it might be the best in its class because it's built for people who don't want as obnoxious of a car. So you're telling me that you think this is better than the Civic Type R? I think this is better than the Civic Type R, the STI, the RS, the Veloster N, if you need to share this car with someone who doesn't drive stick shift. It is not bad at all. Now, what if you had it in manual only? Which one's better now? The thing is, I love my winter driving, so I take this over the Type R. Okay, what about the STI? Pretty close, but I think this is better because of the infotainment and how like modern and nice everything is in here. And what about the Focus RS? That's my favorite one. Yeah, obviously Focus RS. Race seats, stiff ride, we got drift mode, more popping exhaust. Okay, so your order of ranking is Focus RS, Civic Type R, Golf R, STI, is that right? I think this is tied with the Civic Type R. Wow. Because the Civic Type R is cooler, but this is all wheel drive, so it's better for winter. Yeah, okay, but if we were on a track, this thing would get destroyed by a Civic Type R. If we were on a track, I would love the Civic Type R. But I'm not a track guy, I'm a daily guy. Yeah, this is way better for a daily than probably all of the other cars, but it's also the most boring. To be honest, I don't think it's the most boring, especially in these two colors. I don't think the color makes that much of a difference. I think these are definitely the most boring cars you can buy in this class. Yeah, the colors do make it less boring. We were driving next to each other on the highway. One of our fans noticed us and messaged us, said, did I just see you guys in the Golf R's? Yeah, but that doesn't make the car less boring. It just makes it look cooler. Yes, it does make it less boring. I get to look at that beautiful green color all the time when we drive together, and I'm more excited. Really good stuff now, box test. Do you guys think one is gonna fit more than the other? Nine, so right. one more than the GTI. Now let's check the stick shift. Nine. Would you look at that? They're the exact same. Nope, they fit the same. Uh, Rex test? Manual or DSG? Which one? Which one, buddy? Which one? Oh, DSG. 
Rex picked the DSG. All right, now let me try with Rex. Manual or DSG, let's go, let's go, let's go. He loves the auto. Yeah. I don't think this dog knows what he's talking about. My dog is the smartest dog alive. We are sending it into cliche corner in the winter, being very careful, but this four motion all wheel drive is really good. The suspension is amazing as well. Oh, here we go. A little bit of a slide, very controllable. It's actually amazing in the winter. We've got five different modes. We've got eco, comfort, normal, race, and custom. As far as I'm concerned, we only have one mode and that's race mode. Yeah, you can start this car in race mode, which is fantastic. And it changes so many different things, including the suspension, which is adaptive. And in race mode, you also get the sound pumped in. And I think it sounds amazing inside the cabin. You can only hear it inside the cabin. And I think it sounds kind of like a Subaru. It's got like a growl to it. But Yuri, did you know how that sound is pumped in? Something, something through the windshield. Yes, it actually vibrates the windshield, which is pretty crazy. So if you put your hand on it in race mode, you can actually feel the windshield vibrate. Do you want to talk about this digital cockpit? Because it's actually pretty incredible, but it's also pretty confusing. I kind of don't like it. There's too much going on. If you put it in one of the eco modes, there's like a million different like gauges moving around. It's too confusing. Yeah, I agree. You can customize it a bit, but I'd also like a little bit more customization so that you can actually delete some of the things that it's showing because there's so many numbers and little dials everywhere. I 100% agree with you, but you know what I really do like about the digital gauge cluster? What's that? The shift prompt. I feel like it's always in the right spot and telling me exactly what I should be doing. It's always correct. Oh, we forgot our newest test, the gas gauge test. Where's the gas gauge? There's too many icons. Oh, it's on the right. Yeah, full pass. One thing I don't like about the gauge cluster is that when you go to your vehicle status, it doesn't show you the correct color of your vehicle. I don't have an orange Golf R in the middle. I've got a silver one. I wish it was color matched. Do you know how much software that would take? Not much. It's software. A lot. Hey, uh, so we said these are fast, right? Yeah, they're pretty damn fast. Let's put our foot down. Ready and go. Yeah. <laughs> They're pretty damn good, yeah. Especially in the winter. If this was front wheel drive, it wouldn't have been able to hook up. These are very fast. The GTI is what most people need. This is way faster than that. This is what most car enthusiasts need. Speaking of the GTI, do you remember last time I did a visor test in that? Yes, yeah. Take it easy on the visor test this time. Okay, here we go. Okay. Careful visor test. Oh. Ugh. Ready? Three, Three two, two, one. One. Yes. Passes. Passes. Great job, Volkswagen. And, and it stayed on. <laughs> Back to the transmissions, because that's the whole point of this comparison. I think the DSG is way better because it has launch control. Okay, well, speaking of launch control, here's a red light. To get into launch control, you gotta fully turn off traction, you gotta be in race mode, and you gotta be in manual mode. You hold the brakes, you hit the gas, and then go. Oh, it's so fast! <laughs> that was a pretty good launch, buddy. Yeah, in the winter. Well, you know, the stick shift version has launch control as well. This one actually builds boost. It may not be as good, but you put it in first, you have traction off, you're in race mode, and it lets you rev past the limited 4,000 RPM. Yeah, but this one's just way better, way faster. It's actually real launch control with building boost while you're stationary. Yeah, it's easy mode, and it's for people who don't know how to drive a stick shift. Uh, most people know how to drive a stick shift, but they just don't want to anymore because this one's better. The automatic is literally a mom car. I see moms and grandmas driving it all the time. There's no way you see grandmas and moms driving this car. Oh, for sure. Maybe not in that color, but I see moms and grandmas driving Golf R's. I never see them driving STI's, Focus RS's, or Type R's. I think you see them in regular Golf's thinking that they're Golf R's because these cars barely even stand out from a regular Golf. I see I see the R badge and then I see a mom driving her kids somewhere. No way. 100%. I can't prove it because I can't just chase moms down in their Golf R's and film them. But if you've seen a mom driving a Golf R, leave a comment below. The reason I think the manual transmission is better is because it's a manual transmission and every cool car should be in manual. Wow, so predictable, Yuri. The pedals are nice. There's no auto rev matching, but you can heel toe. I expect auto rev matching at this price. There's nothing wrong with this manual transmission and the shifter is nice. It looks cool. It's not a golf ball, but it's like a carbon fiber wrap. Yeah, they both have carbon fiber and I'm pretty sure it's real. It looks pretty real to me. So as I proved, the manual transmission one is better. Now we can carry on to the looks. You didn't prove anything. Looks wise, here we go. They both look kind of mellow. They're not very stylish. However, they look amazing in these two colors. Yeah, but if this was in black, 
it wouldn't be nearly as cool. Exactly, these are very subtle. People think they're regular golfs because they look so golf-like. There's nothing on them that's special. But even the Civic Type R doesn't look that good in black as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, but it stands out like crazy. Barely, man, that spoiler like blends into the body. Can this join the big wing challenge? It cannot. Done, Our argument settled, done. We need a factory big wing, please, Volkswagen. Speaking of looks, this thing has four R badges on the outside. Not a single one says golf. As for looks, this one definitely looks better than the GTI. We've got the frowny bumper instead of the smiley bumper, and we've got a little swoop that goes into where the fog lights usually go. And what about the back end? We've got quad exhaust instead of dual exhaust, which is nice. Yeah, we've got a pretty cool looking rear diffuser as well. That's it. Well, we also have a little lip that goes around the bottom and the front and the sides. I like these wheels. These are optional wheels. Guess how much they cost? Uh, I don't know, 2,000 bucks? $250. Oh, sold. That's it. These wheels look amazing. Yeah, and you can really see the R brakes through them, which are pretty cool. So these are the same brakes that are on the GTI, but with an R badge on them now. Tail lights. Do they stand out for you? Because they don't really stand out for me. I think they are appropriate for this not too outlandish Volkswagen Golf R. But the headlights really do it for me. They look really good. I like that they don't have that red line in the front. No, because GTI is red, so you got blue on the Golf R, and you can kind of see it on the interior mostly in this one. Okay, can I talk about the colors a little bit more? I guess. I really like the lime green Golf R more. It's got a metallic paint on it, so you can really see all the contours a lot easier in all the lighting. The orange one looks really nice, but it's flat paint so you don't really see all the body lines. Speaking of lime green, I also used to have a lime green Camaro, so you oh know. Oh my God, of course he's hits, gonna bring up his Camaro. Hits close to home. Back to the actually important stuff. The suspension, I think, is really soft in comfort mode, but I don't think it's as soft as comfort mode on the Civic Type R. However, I think race mode in this one is less firm also than the Civic Type R, so it's kind of like this middle ground. I agree with you, Jacob. Once again, back to the transmissions, because that's the whole point of this comparison. The one thing I don't like about the DSG is that in traffic, it's really annoying in first gear. So going from stopping to first gear, there's a little bit of jerkiness, but other than that, it's completely fine because this also has adaptive cruise and adaptive cruise in traffic is the greatest thing ever. Hey, should we switch cars so I can drive the automatic? Nope. Good. I don't want to. We're not gonna switch it up this time because we've driven both cars and we found our preferences. I prefer the auto, he prefers the manual. Yeah, and I like looking at the green one more too. You know what, there's actually one thing I have an issue with on the manual transmission. Really, what's that? It's the steering column. It kind of comes down too low and my knee kind of bumps it when I'm using the clutch sometimes. So you don't know how to drive is what you're saying. You don't know how to sit in a car properly because I had no issues with either of these two cars with my knees and I'm way taller than you. Potentially, I don't know how to sit in a car properly, but also look how far down the steering column goes. I would like it a little higher. Hey, Jacob, can I talk about the infotainment? Yeah, I'd actually love to. So with the amount of time I've spent in this, I've gotten pretty used to it, and I actually really like it. That's what I'm saying. This is my favorite one of any car that I've driven so far. It's definitely not my favorite. Kia Hyundai's better, but this is really good. It doesn't rewind satellite radios, but you can do like a add favorite track, so when it shows up again, you get a prompt. And they have Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, which is again, fantastic. It works perfectly. What I don't like about this infotainment is when you use the volume knob, sometimes my middle finger will touch the screen and like go to the first favorite on my uh, bookmarks. Yuri sausage fingers that spins the volume knob that also rotates with the stupid button that looks like it shouldn't rotate. Okay, the next thing I got a problem with, the tuning knob. When you're on satellite radio, say you're tuning through the channels, it doesn't stay on a channel. You have to go to a channel, it'll show you what it's playing, and then you have to click. I like that because it tells me what song is playing and I don't have to commit to that radio station if I don't like that song. Speaking of showing what song is playing, when you're going through satellite radio, it shows the title and the artist like instantly. It doesn't load the song right away, but I think that's really good for browsing through tracks on satellite radio as well. You know what I have an issue with with this infotainment? Tell me. If you go to car and then you go to your performance monitor, it shows you your boost gauge. So, Volkswagen does not subtract the atmospheric pressure, so 30 PSI is not actually 30 PSI, thanks to the commenters that pointed that out in our GTI video. So, it shows 30 PSI, but you have to subtract atmospheric pressure, which is 14.7 PSI, so this thing is only boosting to 15 PSI. Sounds confusing. Why make me think about what the pressure is? Why don't you just show the real pressure? Do you want to make it look higher? Like, what's the point? Don't do that. Higher numbers equals better. Since I think this is the most comfortable daily driver in this segment, we should probably address the interior. Yeah, the interior is very comfortable. 
The seats are nice and bolstered, but they're not uncomfortably bolstered. No, they're very comfortable. I'm bigger than Yuri, and I'm still very comfortable in this car. And I actually fit behind you while you're driving in your regular position. We've got our stitching on the seats, which is nice. We've got heated seats, no heated steering wheel, but the steering wheel is D-shaped. In the automatic, I have flappy paddles, which work very well. And in the stick shift, I have a stick shift. The interior of both of these feels really quality. I'd say it's the best one out of anything in its class. Like Focus RS feels cheap compared to this. STI, that's so loud I can't even hear myself think in that interior. And the Civic Type R is pretty damn good, but it's not as good as this. I do have a couple issues with this interior though. My medium cup of Tim Hortons coffee won't fit properly into the front cup holder, only the back cup holder, because there's an extra little lip that's a little bit different size than the cup. The next thing that bothers me about the interior that my friend Joey pointed out from his GTI is that the side door panel, things can get lost in the back. It's open. Both of these are the top trims with the top spec and they both have the driver assistance package for $1,500. So they have lane keep assist, adaptive cruise and all that kind of fun stuff. And it works really well. You have your lane keep assist and you can turn it off with this stock. It's a little bit annoying. I wish there was like one extra button to turn it off, but it's fine. The adaptive cruise works really well. You have it on your steering wheel. So overall, it sounds like you're a fan of the Golf R now and Volkswagen in general because of the Golf. I am very a fan of Golf R. I think between this and a GTI, if you're thinking about those two, get a base model GTI. Do not get a top trim GTI. Try and save up a little bit more and get a base trim Golf R. In stick shift. Yeah, well that would be the better price point because the DSG is $1,400 extra. Skip the DSG and get Viper Green. So in terms of price, it starts at $42,000, which is pretty good. It's a little bit more expensive than a top trim GTI, which is worth it to get this one. But because we have the top trims, we are in the forty-seven dollars to $48,000 range, depending on if you get the auto or the manual. And depending on the crazy color choices. Yes, because that's $3,000. In terms of hottest hatches, I don't think these are the hottest ones, but if you need an auto, you don't have a choice. So would you recommend buying it? I would highly recommend anyone with a GTI or looking at a GTI or even considering the Golf R to just go and get it. I think if you're looking for the most performance, get a Civic Type R, unless you need all wheel drive, get a Focus RS. But if you want luxury, comfort and all that kind of stuff, definitely the Golf R is number one in that aspect. And on that note, don't forget to subscribe. And hit the bell. And patreon.com slash the straight pipe so we can keep doing these reviews. Let's end this off with some pumped in audio. Pumped in audio sounds. I'm Yuri. I'm Jacob. We're going for a drive. Break. Don't forget subscribe. to subscribe. Subscribe right now. Subscribe. We didn't even. We didn't do that. <laughs>